Hello, I'm Scott Turner, and I'd like to welcome you to Animal Physiology Online. This course is the fourth in a series of courses on animal physiology. The first course in the series considered respiration and gas exchange. The second focused on blood and circulation. Then the third course looked into digestion and metabolism. In this course, the fourth course, we're going to look at temperature, heat balance, and water balance. You can take this course as a standalone course if you wish, but you'll get much more out of it if you go through all four courses in order. If you decide to stay, or before you go, let me tell you something about myself. I'm a professor of biology, and animal physiology is my specialty. You can find out more about me by visiting my website here. I'm a physiologist because I'm fascinated by the many clever ways that animals manage to live in their worlds. In fact, this is the principal theme I try to bring to this course and to the other courses in the series, because physiology is not only the science of how animals work, it has some quite remarkable things to say about evolution. The phenomenon that links both physiology and evolution is the phenomenon of adaptation and we're going to get right into the meat of that in this course. The first three courses in the series were built around two epic evolutionary stories. The evolution of animals from aquatic life to terrestrial life, and the evolution of the high energy lifestyles of the mammals and birds. This course is going to go deeper into the adaptive nuts and bolts that drove these epic stories. Again, let me encourage you to take the first three courses in the Animal Physiology series before coming to this one. The course material here will be much more meaningful if you have. In this course, we're going to learn how animals respond to temperature and the energetic basis of thermal adaptation. We're also going to learn how animals keep their internal fluid environments at just the right tick, no matter whether their environment is drying them out or flooding them with excess water. As we do so, we're going to come away with a better picture of the physics of adaptation and the common currency of energy that underlies it all. This course is aimed primarily at the senior level undergraduate in the biological sciences, as are the other three courses in the animal physiology series that precede this one. The courses together comprise what would be one semester of a two semester course in animal physiology. If you've had the basic preparation that an undergraduate in biology at the upper division would have, namely general chemistry, organic chemistry, some biochemistry, physics, ecology, and of course, general biology, you are well equipped to benefit from this course. However, I try to make the course material understandable to as wide a variety of students as I can. So if you feel up to it, no matter what academic credentials you might have, by all means, give it a try. Thank you for looking at my promotional video. Take a look, too, at some of the complimentary lessons for this course and for the previous courses to get a feel for what they're like. I hope you like what you see.